Something massive is entering our atmosphere, and it's not an asteroid NASA was expecting. For months, telescopes tracked 3.i Atlas as just another interstellar visitor. But now as it closes in on Earth, new data reveals it's not what scientists thought. It's bigger, faster, and showing behavior that defies every orbital model. Atlas isn't two kilometers across. It's 47 kilometers across. We weren't looking at a small asteroid. We've been tracking something the size of a small moon, and it's been decelerating for the past six weeks, which means it's not just passing through our solar system, it's planning to stop here. What's about to be revealed about Atlas's true size, its internal structure, and what it's been doing as it approaches Earth is going to fundamentally change everything we thought we knew about this object. The miscalculation wasn't a simple error. It was systematic, deliberate, like Atlas was designed to appear smaller than it actually is until it got close enough that the truth couldn't be hidden anymore. And now that we know how big it really is, we're starting to understand what we're actually dealing with. This isn't a rock from interstellar space. This is something built, and it's almost here. When we first detected Atlas, it was still beyond Neptune's orbit. At that distance, we rely on brightness measurements and spectroscopic analysis to estimate size. The math is straightforward. Measure how much light it reflects, estimate its composition, calculate approximate size. For months, Atlas appeared to be reflecting light consistent with a dark, rocky surface about two kilometers in diameter. Every measurement confirmed this. Every calculation aligned. The data was consistent. But here's what nobody realized. Atlas wasn't reflecting light naturally. It was controlling its brightness. Three days ago, when NASA's Deep Space Imaging Array finally achieved resolution detailed enough for surface mapping, they noticed something impossible. Atlas's surface wasn't uniformly dark. It had patterns, geometric patterns, hexagonal structures covering the entire surface like scales. And these structures were actively absorbing incoming light, not just reflecting it poorly, but actively capturing and suppressing it, like stealth coating on military aircraft, across an entire 47-kilometer object. A researcher examining the images described the moment of realization. They were looking at the first high-resolution scan, expecting to see craters and irregular rock formations. Instead, they saw a perfectly engineered surface with symmetrical structures repeated across the entire visible area. It was like expecting to photograph a mountain and discovering you're actually looking at a building designed to look like a mountain from a distance. The hexagonal structures aren't natural geological formations. They're manufactured, precision engineered to a tolerance that suggests technology far beyond our current capabilities. Each hexagon is approximately 400 meters across. The entire surface of Atlas is covered with over 11,000 of these structures, all oriented in patterns that suggest deliberate design, like solar panels, sensor arrays, or something we don't yet understand. When NASA recalculated Atlas's actual size based on physical surface mapping rather than brightness estimates, the numbers were stunning. Mass estimates increased by a factor of 24. Internal volume calculations suggested Atlas is large enough to contain structures the size of cities inside it. We weren't wrong because of bad math. We were wrong because something designed Atlas to deceive our measurements until it got close enough that the deception no longer mattered. Here's what makes this absolutely terrifying. Atlas has been slowing down. Objects in space don't just slow down. There's no friction, no air resistance. If something enters our solar system at high velocity, it maintains that velocity unless something acts on it. Natural objects would either maintain speed and pass through or be captured by the sun's gravity and enter an elliptical orbit. Atlas is doing neither. Six weeks ago, Atlas was traveling at 87 kilometers an s relative to the sun, standard interstellar velocity. Then it started decelerating, not through gravitational interaction, but through active propulsion. NASA detected the deceleration through minute changes in Atlas's spectroscopic signature. The rear-facing surface began showing thermal emissions consistent with massive energy release, not reflected sunlight, heat generated from within the object. Atlas is firing engines, braking thrusters, slowing itself down from interstellar velocity to solar system orbital speeds. Current velocity, 31 km s, and decreasing. A current deceleration rates, 
Atlas will reach relative velocity zero with respect to Earth in approximately 14 days. That means an object the size of a small moon, with a manufactured surface and internal power systems capable of generating the thrust needed to decelerate 47 km of mass, will come to a complete stop relative to our planet in two weeks. But the deceleration isn't the most disturbing part. The trajectory isn't heading toward the Sun or into a stable orbit around Jupiter or any other destination that would make sense for natural orbital mechanics. Atlas adjusted its trajectory three weeks ago. Another burn, another course correction. It's heading directly toward Earth's orbital path and its current deceleration profile will bring it to a stop approximately. 34,000 kilometers from Earth's surface, that's a lunar distance. Atlas is planning to position itself in the same orbital space as our moon, not passing by Earth, not entering solar orbit, stopping at the exact distance where humanity has its only natural satellite. Once NASA understood Atlas's true size, they began deep structure analysis using ground-penetrating radar and gravitational measurements. What they found inside makes the surface features look mundane by comparison. Atlas is not solid. It's hollow or more accurately compartmentalized. Radar imaging reveals a complex internal structure with massive empty spaces separated by structural supports. These aren't natural cavities like those found in porous asteroids. They're chambers, deliberately constructed spaces with geometric boundaries. The largest internal chamber measures approximately 12 kilometers across and extends nearly 8 kilometer deep into Atlas's interior. That's large enough to fit Manhattan Island inside with room to spare. Radar has identified at least 17 major internal chambers, plus hundreds of smaller spaces. The structural supports between chambers show engineering characteristics, load-bearing architecture, symmetrical placement, distribution patterns that suggest deliberate design to handle stress and maintain structural integrity during acceleration or maneuvering. Gravitational analysis confirms the internal structure. Atlas's total mass is approximately 8.7 trillion kiesigs, enormous in absolute terms, but far less than a solid rocky body of equivalent size. The density calculations suggest Atlas is roughly 40% empty space by volume. Some of those internal chambers are showing thermal signatures, heat, not uniform temperature from solar radiation, but localized heat sources inside specific chambers. Temperature differentials suggest active systems, power generation, possibly life support. Something inside Atlas is producing heat in patterns that don't match any natural process. NASA also detected electromagnetic emissions originating from inside the object, not communications, at least not the kind monitored externally. These are internal signals, short-range transmissions between different sections of Atlas's interior structure. It's like watching a building's internal network, different rooms communicating with each other, Systems coordinating an entire infrastructure, operating inside this object as it approaches. Earth-1 analysis suggested the electromagnetic eye. Patterns resemble automated systems conducting status checks and operational coordination, like a massive facility powering up, running diagnostics, preparing systems for arrival. The most unsettling detail came from spectroscopic analysis of small venting events on Atlas's surface. Three times over the past week, the hexagonal structures opened briefly, releasing gas into space before closing again. The gas composition contained nitrogen, oxygen, and trace amounts of carbon dioxide. The ratios don't match any known natural process, but they do match Earth's atmosphere. Whatever is inside Atlas, it's venting breathable air. Either it's carrying an atmosphere from somewhere else, or it's generating one. Both possibilities suggest something inside those chambers needs oxygen. As Atlas approaches Earth, its surface is transforming. The hexagonal structures that initially appeared static are now actively reconfiguring. High-resolution imaging over the past 72 hours shows individual hexagons opening, rotating, and repositioning. The movement is coordinated, not random, following clear patterns across the entire surface. Some hexagons are opening to reveal underlying structures, machinery framework, and what might be sensor equipment being exposed as the hexagons retract. Others are rotating to face different directions. More and more of these structures are orienting directly toward our planet, like thousands of sensors or cameras turning toward their target.